I'm here with a pile of hardware, and that must mean I'm building something. If you followed my channel for a while, you've probably seen my HP Microserver Gen 8. This thing has run Proxmox for me, I've used it for all kinds of testing, and the problem I have with it is it uses too much power. So today we're going to find a new role for it that better fits my home lab without getting rid of it, because I don't like getting rid of hardware that works fine. It's going to be my backup server. So inside here we've got four drive bays. These are SATA normally, although I got a SAS card for it so I can use SAS drives. I got some 10 terabyte Seagate XO SAS drives. They're refurbished. I'm going to run them in a RAID Z1, so that will give me 30 terabytes usable. And I'm going to run Proxmox backup server. Ordinarily I wouldn't do this, but since Proxmox backup server stores everything in a chunk format across a wide variety of files with a huge number of files per directory, I'm going to add two of these very cheap Kingston, Kingston A400 uh, SATA drives to be ZFS special devices. They're going to be in a mirror. So we'll see how this helps. I have no idea if it'll help or not. I guess I'll have to benchmark it. When the microserver came to me, the previous owner had added this LSI 2011 SAS card, which works great, but I have a little bit different thing in mind for this. So I bought, what is this? So I have some other plans for this server down the road. So I bought this LSI SAS 9207 4i4e. So this 9211 has eight channels of SAS, six gigabit, two SFF8087 connectors, that's the internal SAS. New card also has eight channels. Four of them go inside, four of them go outside. So I got party in the front, party in the back. And this I can use to hook up to other things outside of the chassis, it's a nice little cube. So this is going in today. The motherboard has a five port SATA controller, the four backplane, which goes through an SFF8087 connector, plus a single SATA for the optical drive. My model doesn't have an optical drive. I could plug something in there, but uh, just don't need it. So I'm going to connect the internal SATA to my two SSDs, the back plane to my LSI card, and that just leaves me with a boot drive. So the SATA controller on the motherboard can boot from the four SATA ports in the drive bays, which would then become these two. And these are going to become the ZFS special device. So setting them up with Proxmox um, boot tool would not be that easy. So instead, I'm just going to boot off a micro SD card with an EXT4 file system. Got a 32 gig card. This thing has a built-in micro SD slot on the motherboard. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to do for hardware. Oh yeah, um, this is part of my series where I'm working on setting up a new Proxmos cluster with Ceph. And it's also part of my new home network, uh, which I've also got some videos testing new software on that. So logically, of course, you want to have good backups so that if you break everything during migration, you can restore it from backups and be happy. So that's what I'm doing here. Come along on this adventure. Now the hardware's all set up, I'm going to install Debian, regular Debian Bullseye, on the micro SD card in here. Then I'm going to install Proxmox backup server from Deb Packages. It's got my Ventoy drive. Since I don't have room for a high speed network card, I'm going to do a 2 gigabit bond. So LACP to the switch. Um, but for now I'm just going to set up one. This thing takes forever to boot up. It's so loud. <laughs> 
So while you hear this thing roar, my goal for this is to boot it up once every other day, so every 48 hours, have it do an incremental backup of my Proxmox systems and shut down again. I'm not gonna set that all up in this video. I'm gonna have a dedicated video on that in the future, but uh, that's why I chose this to be my backup server because it doesn't need to run all the time and it uses a ton of power and is loud and that's why I don't really wanna use it for a production node. Debian installs done. Now I'm gonna run the Proxmox backup server install. The website has easy instructions on how to do this. You basically add a new deb repository and apt sources.list and install Proxmox backup or Proxmox backup server. And there we go. It's installing. It's gonna install the Proxmox VE kernel as well, which has OpenZFS support and some other things. It's a new day and it's time to set up the software. So I was having errors on the drives, not the usual kind of errors like failing blocks or whatever, but in dmessage, I was getting block protection errors. And this is a very specific error that doesn't mean the IO failed, it means the drive told it it was write protected. In this case, read protected. Anyway, the fix is relatively simple. The drives had previously been used with a hardware RAID controller, and they had been erased by the refurbisher, but they were still configured for the RAID controller. So I just had to reformat them to their default state using a SCSI format. Command for that is in the blog post below. Um, it took a while, it took it almost a whole day for each drive, I ran them all at once, so it wasn't like, I didn't wait a week for this. But uh, yeah, that's why it's tomorrow. Drives got reformatted, they're ready to go. So current state of the system, I have the root file system, ext4, on the SD card. I'm going to create a ZFS pool and add it as a data store in Proxmox backup server. Storage disks, ZFS, create ZFS. I'm gonna do raid Z, so raid Z1. So I have four disks, I lose one of them to parity effectively, so I get 30 terabytes usable, roughly. So SDA, B, C, and D. And let's go. Should be pretty quick. Get ZFS pool set up. Then I'm gonna go into the command line and manually add the two special devices. So a command I'm using for this is zpool add. I give it the name of the pool, which is backup. And I say it's a special VDEV, that's a mirror. Then I give the uh, device names. So A, B, C, D are my SAS drives. E and F, those are my uh, special drives. So let's add those. So there we go, there's my pool in PBS. So now we've got the data storage set up, let's add it to Proxmox VE. So from PBS, I'm gonna add a new user for my new server. You could add one user, however, however you wanna do user allocations, up to you. Need to give the user permissions, don't forget about that. We can give them permission just to a specific data store if we want to set them back up there. So with the user added in Proxmox, I'm gonna add a new storage of type Proxmox backup server. Storage add Proxmox backup server. Now we realize we need a fingerprint. You only need a fingerprint if you have a self-signed certificate that Proxmox VE wouldn't inherently trust. So we had to go back to the backup server and get that. So in the shell, we're gonna run Proxmox Backup Manager Cert Info. And copy that fingerprint over to PVE. And there we go, let's see if we can add a backup. Backup, add. This is my test system, that's why I don't have backup, just so you know. And we'll click run now, just to see what happens. So over on the backup server, we can see the backup is here. 
this is a pretty tiny backup, but uh, I run some more and let's see what happens. So I'm gonna let this run for a while. I only have gigabit ethernet in this system, so uh, it's not gonna be as fast as my 10 gig setup, but my backups are running, they're happening. They got plenty of time to run overnight. And once the initial backup happens, it'll be deduplicated on the client side. So it shouldn't take nearly this long. I got a tiny bit of usage history now. It's showing me how many backups have happened. And uh, I'm using 52 gigs of my 30 terabytes, which is great. Um, I'm sure the stats will fill in eventually, but uh, I'm happy with this for now. So I got my Proxmox backup server set up and I'm happy with it. My Proxmox VE machines are backing up to this. I have plenty of space for everything I need going forward and all my data should be nice and safe when I start migrating everything over to Ceph. So what are my plans for this server going forward? Well, I got a couple ideas. So currently I'm backing up from Proxmox VE, that is my VMs and containers. I'm not backing up my TrueNAS system, which mostly just has backups from my Proxmox system anyway, so that's not a big deal. But I do have my video files and my media that I need to back up. And so I could run Proxmox Backup Client on TrueNAS, but the TrueNAS people are real angry about you messing, messing with the Debian system. Uh, which is one of the reasons I'm leaving TrueNAS entirely, because the uh, developers are kind of assholes. So long term I'm going to end up moving my data from TrueNAS to Ceph. Then I can mount the CephFS file system on the backup server, with the backup server being a Ceph client, and then run a cron job on the backup server to back up the files in CephFS. That's the long term goal. Short term I'm probably just going to run the Proxmox backup client on the TrueNAS system, like I did in the previous video, a long time ago video, and uh, that'll be that. I have not set up the LACP bond yet on the networking, and I'm actually out of ports on my network switches. Both of them are entirely full, so I can't add any more. And uh, I'm going to have to buy a new switch, probably a new 10 or 25 gig switch. I'm really looking nice at those uh, Microtik CRS 510s, but I probably can't afford that. I'll probably use a CRS uh, 309, I think it is, the uh, 8 port 10 gig switch. Um, but yeah, so that'll be the long term plan for this. And I got one more cool thing. A tape drive. This is what that uh, rear SAS port is for. This is going to just connect directly from the SAS card to the tape drive. Put my tape in there. It's a nice little compact backup enclosure. This is LTO5 and it can do 1.5 terabytes raw per tape. And uh, I haven't even plugged it in yet. So definitely a topic for a future video. If you want to see that, don't forget to follow me, uh, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I have a Discord server link down below, and uh, I'll see you on the next adventure. Not this adventure, this is going to be a many next adventure adventures, but you get the idea.